Well hi friends, it's Aaron here from Opportunity Fishing and today I want to talk about fly fishing for carp. So why would you fly fish for carp? I think uh, probably a better question is why wouldn't you fly fish for carp? They're readily available, they are really challenging to catch, and oftentimes in a given body of water they might be the biggest fish that you're fishing for. So the first thing I want to talk about is gear. So fly fishing for carp you want to use a six, seven, or even an eight weight rod. Uh, you want to use floating line and you want to use a minimum of 3x. Most of the time I'm fishing 2x or 1x. They're actually not too tippet shy. So I use about a seven and a half foot leader and a foot and a half of tippet. So we've talked about the rod, we've talked about the line. Uh, what, what type of flies do you use for carp? So I'll show you some of my favorites now. Number one for me is definitely the Berry's Carp Bitter. So see here, I have a rust colored one. Uh, you can kind of make out the bead chain eyes through the fur. Uh, the bead chain eyes help it ride hook point up in the water. And you want it to ride hook point up so if there's a tailing carp it comes and, and it grabs it. You know, it's kind of right there uh, for the hook getting right in the corner of the mouth. Um, I like the olive color as well, this one here. Uh, as you can see, this one's pretty beat up. It's beat up because it's caught me a ton of fish, but I'm still fishing it. You know, these look kind of like crayfish or debris in the water. Um, can be a whole variety of things that carp like to feed on. And I like this pattern too because these bee chain eyes are actually pretty light. Um, and it lands pretty softly on the water. So it's good if you're fishing shallow water. You don't need to get deep super fast. And um, in shallow water, the carp are more spooky. So next up is a damselfly nymph. This is Rob Snow White's damselfly nymph pattern. Uh, it's a really good fly. It works well for all kinds of species. Um, large mouth, small mouth, crappie, perch, trout, and carp. So actually the largest carp I've seen anyone catch on the fly. Uh, one of my good friends caught using a, a variety of one of these. Yeah, it's really hard to net. It's like too big. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And then finally, we have this fly here. This is John Montana's hybrid carp worm. Uh, this is one I tied. This is a really simple fly to tie, and I have caught carp on it. As you can see, it rides really nice hook point up because uh, of the bead chain eyes. Um, and it's, it's pretty much just three materials. It's, uh, it's ultra fine red chenille, peacock hurl, and hackle. So those are kind of my go-to flies. There's more, but that's what I like to use. Okay, so the first tip I have to give for actually catching carp is you first have to find the feeding carp. Like that seems obvious, right? Well, it's not always the case because oftentimes you'll see carp and you'll want to fish to them, but they're not always feeding. What you want to look for is a carp with its nose down and its tail up in the air. Uh, oftentimes these are stirring up the ground, making a mud cloud. These tailing fish are the perfect fish to fish for. Um, sometimes you'll see carp feeding on the surface. Those can be caught too, although they're more difficult. And sometimes you'll see some slowly cruising fish just picking things off the bottom and moving from spot to spot. Those fish are great targets as well. The fish you don't want to fish for are fish that are are moving really fast, they're going somewhere in a hurry, and you don't really want to fish for the fish that are 
kind of just enjoying the sun and not really doing anything. We'll talk about tailing fish. So the best way to fish for a tailing fish is with what's called a drag and drop presentation. So let me show you an example of that on the water here now. Fishing to tailing fish, like I said, is my favorite. And for that, you use what's called a drag and drop presentation. So the idea behind that is if you cast right on top of the fish, they might spook. So your goal is to actually cast past the fish and then drag the fly to where it will intercept their path and drop it right in front of them. So let's pretend that these weeds sticking out of the water, there's a feeding carp just to the right of them. So I would, if I was doing a drag and drop presentation, I would kind of cast it past and I would drag my fly up in the water and let it drop right in front of the fish. So I'll do that one more time. Cast just past, drag the fly on top of the water, let it drop. And that's when you gotta watch your line real closely. If you see it tick or move, or sometimes you can see the carp actually take the fly, you need to set the hook. Um, if you're fishing pretty far out, you want a strip set. If you're fishing super close to shore, you can get away with a trout set where you lift the rod. Um, it's just kind of something you have to get used to, and I still mess it up quite a bit, actually. <laughs> There's times when I'm trout setting when I should be strip setting, and that's uh, honestly more often than not. So, you know, as a trout fisherman, it's just a habit to overcome. Here we go. Um, that's not the only strategy. Sometimes if you see carp feeding on the surface, there's flies that you can use that uh, they will take. You know, sometimes they'll take hopper patterns. Um, you can tie a fly that looks like cottonseed, they'll take that. Um, berries, sometimes if there's berries dropping on the water, they absolutely love eating berries, so there's flies to imitate those. Um, and then sometimes, as you'll see in this next clip, if you're fishing in really muddy water and you can get super close to the carp, you can kind of just dangle the fly in front of their faces. So check this clip out. Carp number two. All right, so another really important tip I have to give is walk softly. Carp have really sensitive lateral lines and they can really feel the movement on the bank. So there have been many times where I've been fishing for carp and I've been in a hurry going to the lake too fast and I have spooked fish away from the bank that I could have otherwise caught. Oh, I just spooked one from the bank. All right, so another thing you'll wanna do when you're fishing for carp is you wanna become part of the scenery. As you can see, I'm wearing kind of drab clothing. I even went as far as wearing a camo shirt. Um, it's all part of my attempt to kind of blend into the environment and not be seen. So another thing you really need to think about with this is your body language. If you have the body language of a predator and you're leaning forward, really obviously focused in on the fish, you might alert them that something is wrong. So it's better if you kind of keep that in mind and use body language where you're fishing to the fish, 
but you're not looking like a predator. So another thing I like to do is keep as much of my body concealed as I can. As you'll see in this next clip, I caught a really nice carp while I was standing behind some tall bushes and some grass. And I was fishing super close to shore and this carp didn't even see me because of where I was standing. No way. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh my. All right. This is a big fish. Boy, I can't budge him. You coming in? Got him. Oh my God. <laughs> that is a big freaking fish. Come here, you beautiful thing. Oh, geez, you are heavy. I'll lay you just a little bit in the bank. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's even bigger when you hold it. Yeah. Let him go. Like that is oh, it's fine. If not, I have plenty of footage. And now I'm going to give you one of my secret tips that I only started doing this year, but it really has improved my success with fishing for carp. So carp are a fish that hunt a lot by smell and it's really hard to convince them to eat something that only looks like food and doesn't smell like it. So what I do to kind of help with this situation is I actually take my fly, I go down to the water's edge and I rub it in the mud and vegetation in the water. This kind of eliminates the scent from the natural oils in your hand and gives it more of a, a natural scent of something that would be in the water. So try this. I bet you it'll help a lot. Another really important tip is after you catch a nice fish, make sure you check your knot. Carp pull hard. They're often in thick vegetation. Um, and after you catch a nice fish, it's never a bad idea to just check your line, check your, check your knot on your fly, but also check your tippet knots. If there are any nicks or if the knot seems weak, absolutely cut it off and retie because when you lose a big fish, it's heartbreaking. Shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, drag and drop. Broke me off. I should have retied after that last carp. Fought pretty, pretty good. All right, that's it for the fishing tips. I do have one final tip for you, and that's don't get discouraged. Fly fishing for carp is really challenging, and that's part of what makes it so fun. It's not a numbers game, you know, oftentimes if you catch one or two fish, it's a really good day. Um, but keep at it, just keep at it, and I promise you, you'll have a whole lot of fun. I hope these tips and tricks have been useful, and we'll see you on the next video.